Welcome back to Mr. Wolf's Village, where, if you remember, we are exploring ways in which we can build a bridge across this river so the gingerbread man can get to where the grass is greener. Today, we're going to look at some different types of bridge. And we'll start to think about the different choices we're going to have to make. Now, let's have a look. This first one is called a beam bridge. I've got a picture here of a beam bridge. And this one's made of rope. This model from the train set shows a very long beam bridge. And you can see these beams can be added for as long as you need but each beam has to be supported. Next, we've got a bridge that you would see in London. It's a bascule bridge and it's a type of drawbridge because the middle part can be pulled up for large ships to go through and then it can be lowered again for the cars and pedestrians to pass across in the road. Next, coming over here we've got an example of an arch bridge. The arch refers to the shape. I've got a model of an arch bridge here and in this arch bridge we've got the arch itself or the road then we've got these supports, but we've also got the base and either side, the weight of this arch is being pushed into this base. So this has to be very strong, this base. Next, we have a suspension bridge. In this suspension bridge, we have got some towers, we've got the base again, like a beam bridge and an arch bridge, but we don't have any supports going in the middle. And can you see that this bridge can span a very, very great distance without the need for the supports underneath. The supports instead come in the form of these towers and cables. The road is suspended using cables or string in this model. And then lastly, a cantilever bridge. And this uses weight either side to leverage the middle part upwards. Now, lots and lots of decisions because let's just look again at our river our river is quite wide and as i said last week we want to make sure that boats can go underneath if we put an arch bridge that might work but we might have to have some supports going in the water. If we have a beam bridge, also it could work, but we'd have to put supports in the water and it might get in the way of the boats. A bascule bridge for the Tower, like the Tower of London, Tower Bridge in London, um, that could also work. That might take some more engineering but I am thinking that because of the great distance that we want to span and because we don't want the supports to be in the water, a suspension bridge might be a good option. You can choose to build any bridge. I'm just thinking out loud about the options that I'm going to make, the choices I'm going to make. Um, 
And at the moment, I feel that a suspension bridge would be a good one for Mr. Gingerbread Man. Now, your task is to start to think about getting prepared for construction. I've come over to our haberdashery just to have a look at the resources that you guys might want to start to collect. We've got things that we can fix other things together with, materials together. So for fixings, I've got cellar tape. I've also got string and some glue and tin foil. Tin foil can be good to fix things, um, especially around um, joints. Then I've got my scissors and mark making tools. And this fishing line will be a bit stronger than the um, string that I have here. Oh, I've also got a hole punch that might come in handy. Okay, so they're the things that might help us join and fix the materials together. And then I started to collect junk modeling. Okay, materials for junk modeling. I have got scrap paper. We're going to need this to make a model before we make the real thing and also to be able to test out our ideas. So start collecting scrap paper. Down here I've got some plastic, but it's um, plastic that has bubble wrap or bubbles in it that might help give support or waterproofing or traction. I've also got some plastic containers, bottles, things that I picked up from Lidl fantastic resource for junk modeling yeah source of junk modeling then we've got cardboard um, I've got cardboard boxes egg cartons um, some more cardboard boxes but this time these are smaller ones um, I might use those for towers I'm not sure yet or for the base I could put something inside here to weigh it down um, I've collected some plastic bottle tops I'm not sure what they'll be used for but um, they've I've added them to my uh, stock I've got fabric different fabrics I've got these long life milk cartons I like the shape of these and I think that these could be used um, in lots of ways I've also got cardboard boxes that stack on top of each other if I wanted to make a huge bridge. Um, here is some cork that I found and don't forget that you could also collect sticks or natural materials that you find. So here can you see I've already started to experiment with binding these together with string. In this last part, I've got some rope and a ribbon and some handles from something that was being thrown away. So I might attach these somehow or use them. I'm not sure yet. Um, these are metal um, twists that you wrap around. And some more card and some wood. So... Your first task before we start construction is to gather your resources. In class, I've also got the wooden blocks that I could use, but we're going to be cutting and shaping and joining and fixing. So um, junk modeling is your best option because if um, something doesn't turn out the way we want it, then we're not destroying resources that we want to use again, okay?